Amen, amen. Turn me this morning to the book of Luke, chapter 22. Luke, chapter number 22. Amen. Appreciate everybody being with us today. Amen. Got something on my heart the Lord gave me last night late. Amen. want to give it to you today. Luke, chapter number 22. Luke, number 22. Be much in prayer for these needs that we've given out today. Amen. If you have any questions about those, just get with me after service. Amen. And uh, just be much in prayer for them. I know there's some that's uh, out today because of that. Amen. And there's some that that's just out, amen, and not here, and we don't know where they're at. So pray that God would get a hold of them and deal with them about being faithful to the house of God. Amen. Don't you believe in that? I believe in faithfulness, don't you? I want God to be faithful to me, so I want to be faithful to come to his house and worship him. Luke chapter 22, verse number 31. Verse number 31, Luke 22, if you have it, say amen. amen. The Lord said, Simon, Simon. Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. He said, But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Father, I love you today. Thank you for the presence that I felt in this house. Just for a few minutes this morning, Lord, would you anoint these lips of clay? Lord, I pray, God, that you'd give us a spirit of liberty, Lord, in this house, especially in the altars. We'll give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen, 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 amen. Saved from the sift, amen. Saved from the sift. The Lord said, Simon, Simon. You ever notice in the Bible when... Uh, he's really trying to get a hold of somebody. God will call their name twice. You ever notice that? There's several places in the scripture where he calls someone's name, and he calls it twice. Uh, you know, we're kind of like that as parents. When we call our children, uh, sometimes we'll call their name twice before we give them a chance to answer because we want them to, to listen to what we've got to say. Amen. And here the Lord looks at Peter, and he says, Satan hath desired to have you. Amen. He has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. I don't know if you realize it or not, but but we're a wrestling right now with a lot of things in the church world. I'm not going to preach about the world in general. I'm going to preach about the church because we're in the church this morning. I'm going to preach to you this morning. We're wrestling with a lot of things. We're wrestling with things that are greater than we are in our natural self. Amen. We're wrestling against uh, uh, wickedness, and we're wrestling against uh, 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 we're wrestling against self. I think if I just would just be we'd be real with our own minds. We're wrestling within ourself for the most part. There is there is a, a part of us that we love. We love ourself and. And if we're not careful, we will let self uh, um, get ahead of the Lord. Amen. The reason that, that many times, more often than not, the reason that uh, we don't have those that are faithful to church is they let self get in the way of their attendance and their worship. Amen. Because if the truth be told, if the truth be told, if we would say, well, and I'm not going to preach on faithfulness this morning, but I want to hit this real quick. If the truth would be told, whenever we desire to do something, amen, when we desire to go somewhere, we make sure that we make it. Amen. Amen. I've got, I've got something coming up uh, on a Saturday in May that I have designated since last year. And another Saturday in June, two different Saturdays that I have designated, and 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 I, I I specifically said if nothing can keep me from that, 
I will be there. And the reason I said that is because it ain't got nothing to do with being spiritual. It's got to do with knives and guns, things that I like. But there's a couple of places that I want to be at, amen, some shows that day just because I'm interested in, in things like that. And I, I have purpose in my mind that I will be there unless something hinders me from being there. What would hinder me from being there? Anything dealing with the church, number one, would hinder me from being there. Anything dealing with my family, number two, uh, all those things would hinder me. But what I'm getting at is I've desired in my heart to be there. And when we get up on a Sunday morning, let me just change that back. When we're getting ready for, for bed and we're winding down on Saturday evening, our minds ought to already be, Lord, I'm getting ready to go to church on Sunday morning. I'm getting ready to be there in church and not just go, but I'm going to worship. Amen. Sunday afternoon, I know we like to have our naps, and I used to know what those are like. I don't know what they're like on Sunday afternoon as much anymore. But when it comes time to be here in church on Sunday night, Amen, it's time to be in church. Amen, midweek service, Wednesday night, the least attended church service in this church and just about every other church I know of everywhere, but it should not be that way. It wasn't that way 15, 20 years ago. Amen. Amen. Well, you don't understand. I work a job, so do I. 12 hours a day on, my, on, on Wednesday. I get up extra early so I can get off extra early and be in the house of God. Amen. All right, back to my message. That was free. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Amen. The devil desires and is determined to have each and every person under the sound of my voice this morning because he desires to sift you. He desires to destroy you. Amen. It is his determination to destroy your life. Amen. This term here refers to the process. If you go back and look at how they would, would, would separate the, the husk of the wheat from the grain back in this time, how that the wheat was crushed underfoot, then it was agitated and then thrown in the air. You had to deal with the chaff or the, the husk because it was blown away by the wind and left behind good grain. It was a sifting process. And what this simply means is, is the Lord is telling Peter that there is an enemy that wants to take you and he wants to tear you apart. Amen. He wants to tear you apart. He wants to separate you. He wants to destroy your faith. He wants to destroy your worship. He wants to destroy your obligation. He wants to destroy everything about you. He wants to sift you until there is nothing left. Amen. Now, I, 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 me, when I read this, a lot of times, my mind goes back to my grandmother, how she'd reach in a bucket and scoop out flour, and she'd take that sifter and sift that flour, and that's a good description also. But what it's really talking about here was that old way that they would sift that grain and how it would just tear it apart, amen, and it would destroy it in a sense, amen. And you see, this is what he'd already done with Judas, uh, and he was after Peter, amen. And the Lord seen that. The Lord foretold that, amen. He even told him, he said, Peter the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt deny me thrice, amen, that thou even knowest me. It was already in the work, and God was telling him, Peter, he's desired to sift you as we. I want to let somebody know this morning uh, that everybody here, uh, it, that the enemy of your soul uh, has desired to sift you. Uh, he gets up. I say he gets up. Uh, he never stops. Uh, but when you get up every morning, uh, he's already planning how he can destroy your life in a day. Everywhere you go, he's trying to see what he can do to destroy. Every, every turn you take, oh, there's trouble waiting around. Uh, every corner because he desires uh, to destroy. Amen. We battle an enemy this morning that is determined uh, and he wants nothing more than to cut the heart of God uh, by sifting your life uh, and to sift my life. You know what he wants to do? Uh, he wants to show He wants to show the world. Uh, ain't nothing but a bunch of phonies. Uh, it's all fake. Uh, it's not real. Uh, that's why when we get in the trials of our life uh, and God helps us uh, and even though we're going through a battle, uh, we still got our head held high. We're still praising God. Uh, we're still being faithful to church uh, even though the enemy is trying to destroy us uh, we're showing him uh, that my God is greater uh, you might be determined uh, but my God will 
destroy you one day. Oh, he has already won the battle. And he is with us, church. I said he's with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can drive a wedge between you and members in the church. He'll do that. If he can cut you off from the heart of God and ruin your life, he'll do that. If he can drive a wedge between you and members of your own family, he'll do that. He likes to destroy. He don't care that your family is tied and they love each other. If he can separate your family, oh, he is as happy as he can be. It bothers me. It really bothers me when I see families and church members and friends friends get at odds with each other uh, and get just mad at each other because somewhere off in the corner uh, there's an enemy that's looking uh, and he's laughing uh, and he's saying I've got them uh, and I'm destroying them uh, and I, oh, they're just doing the work that I want them to do but praise God uh, it does not have to be that way uh, it does not uh, as much as he desires uh, as much as he desires to sift us uh, there is a savior uh, that will save you from the sifting I want you to remember something this morning if the enemy desires to get you to sin, and if he can get you into falling into sin, I want you to realize this. The sin that you commit does not affect just you. Sometimes we think that just because if we, well, I can just do this. Just small. Nobody will know. But it affects everybody around you. Sin affects everybody around you. You know, the fall of Adam touched everybody, didn't it? David thought, well, if I just pull Bathsheba over here and just have uh, my time with her and nobody will ever know. Oh, but my. It didn't affect just David and just his house. It affected the entire kingdom. He desires to sift you. He, he, he is determined. But I want to tell you something. I like what God says after that. He said, but I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Do you realize that times of testing and trial are going to come? Amen. There are times of you're going to go through in your life that are going, it's going to feel like that everything's against you. I wish that I could tell everybody when they come to God. Oh, everything's just going to be wonderful and great from here on out. You ain't going to have to worry about the devil. You're not going to have to deal with that. But see, the thing is, people that are living and not living for God, you're just living life, walking through life aimlessly. Amen. You're living after your father, the devil. Come on now. You're either living for God or you're living for him. The thing is, when you're living for him, it seems like nothing bothers you. It seems that way. And the reason is, is because you're doing exactly what he wants you to do. Doesn't mean that there's not consequences because there are. But you see, when I'm living for God, the reason that, that sometimes, and I, I had a guy ask me one time, he said, why is it that after I got saved, it seems like that the more I live for God, the more the devil fights me. He said, I never felt that before. I said, of course you didn't. Because you was living for him. You was doing exactly what he wanted you to do. I said, but when you got saved and give your heart to God and you started getting into the lids of that word and you started reading about it and God began to sanctify you and clean you up, he began to touch your heart and your mind. He began to change the way you thought. He began to change the way you did life. I said, you went totally against what he had planned for you and the reason you feel that resistance is because you're trying to live for God and he will always be in opposition to God. So if I can tell somebody this morning, if you're feeling the resistance, then lift your head, kick your heels, and shout glory, hallelujah, because you're just making him mad. Woo, hallelujah. There's times that I feel that way, and I feel down and out, and I think, my, it just gets so aggravating that every time it seems like I get something figured out and pushed out of the way, here's something else, and then I get to think about that, I say, well, you know what? That's the way that God said it'd be. Hey, man, the flesh wars against the spirit. The spirit wars against the flesh, and so I'm just going to keep on living right for God, knowing, hey, man, the enemy of my soul one day will be totally defeated. Hallelujah. He's already been 
been defeated. Uh, he just don't realize it yet. Uh, but one day, one day, hallelujah, my Bible tells me that one angel, I said one angel, uh, oh, is going to take care of him. Hallelujah to God. Uh, I'm glad that I serve a God this morning, uh, that it feels like I'm just to be sifted, uh, but he pulls me out, uh, and he delivers me uh, in the middle of my trial. Thank God. Hallelujah. Prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Amen. <laughs> Why is it that we think that all failure is final? Well, I failed. I must be just done. Well, I'm done. I've talked with people. I've counseled the couples that think, well, I'm just done. I went this far. I might as well just keep going. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Well, I've went just to, and, and you, the devil might be telling you, just, just, just come on. Just come on. You've already messed up a little bit. It's going to get better. Don't believe that lie. Oh, you just messed up a little bit. It's okay. Come on around this way, and we'll go a different direction. Everything will be great. You better not listen to him. He desires to sift you. And all he's doing is getting you closer to the sifter. That's all he's doing. You're thinking, well, I'm not really, oh, no, 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 no. He's trying to get you closer to the sifter where he can start destroying. Oh, God, help me this morning. So, you know, I, people have asked me sometimes why I'm so adamant, seems like, about the family. I had a guy ask one time, he says, it seems like you talk about the family. Anytime you talk about the family and you talk about those, why are you so adamant? Because I see where the devil likes to destroy. I'm going to tell you something. He wants to destroy individuals, but most of the time he may not get an individual, but he'll get inside of a home. He'll work through the kids. He'll work through the husband. He'll work through the wife. And if he can get them at odds with each other and get them, I know I said something about this last Sunday, and I ain't trying to harp on this Sunday after Sunday, but if he can get married couples in the divorce court, he can start dividing and pulling. Come on now. You know that's what he's after. If he can get it that way. If he can get mamas mad with their children, if he can get daddies upset with their sons, if he can do that, then he can start dividing and he can start pulling. And you know what happens uh, when that happens? Just, let, me, let me just give you a scenario. Will you hear me just a minute this morning? Let me just give you a scenario. If the, if the devil got in my house and he got me and my wife at odds with each other, all right, he got us so at odds with each other, hey amen, that, 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 that all of a sudden we was choosing sides with our kids. Come on now. All of a sudden we couldn't get along and we just started coexisting. We just started coexisting. Well, you know what would happen? It wouldn't just affect my home, but I'd come to church and I'd try my best to hide it and get up here, even though I thought I, I could I could deal with it. And she'd try her best to sing and play the organ and deal with it. And you know what would happen if we didn't look at each other in the face and address the issue and get it resolved? He would keep pulling and pulling and pulling. And what do you think would happen if the pastor and the pastor's wife got in such a bad way that we decided we couldn't live with each other. I can tell you what would happen. Uh, we'd leave the church. Uh, we'd leave each other. Our kids would probably get out of church. Uh, who knows what would happen down the line. Uh, and all it would take was just one acknowledgement uh, that the devil's trying to sift me. Uh, my, I, She's not my enemy. Uh, I'm not hers. Uh, we don't have enemies in this church. Uh, there is one common enemy uh, and he desires to sift. Uh, but there's a savior uh, that will take care uh, of you before the sift uh, and his name is Jesus uh, and if you'll call out to him friend uh, he will bring you together it will affect the entire congregation you know what else it would affect it would affect my family in South Georgia it will affect our family in South Alabama it will affect our home churches in South Georgia and our home churches in South Alabama it will affect everybody uh, because the devil decided to try and we let him uh, but I will let somebody know this morning uh, you don't have to let him in your life uh, I said you don't have to let him in uh, you don't have to let him have control uh, but surrender yourself to God I've been so under a burden here lately. 
I, 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 I hate to just say it like this, but I get so mad. I get so mad at sin. I get so mad. My wife and I have this thing uh, late at night. A lot of times we'll talk about things. And more often than not, we get to talking about how much we hate deception. <laughs> Excuse me. I hate deception. I hate deceptiveness. Hey Amen. What did Jesus say will be a sign of his coming back and a sign of the end time? He said, take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. Oh, there's a lot of people out there that are trying to deceive you into believing something else. There's people that are trying to deceive you into looking after their way and their purpose. And I'm telling you, the enemy wants to deceive uh, the men and women of the church. Uh, he wants to deceive the homes. Uh, but I'm telling you this morning, there is a Savior. Uh, he's not a deceptive Savior. Uh, oh, no. Uh, but he is a risen Savior. Hallelujah. He's not dead. Uh, I know we out there trying to get that tomb up. Uh, Bodie's been trying to get it up. Uh, but every time I still look out there and see it, uh, I said, that's an empty tomb uh, with the emphasis on empty. Hallelujah. He's He's not dead, uh, but he's alive, uh, and he's there uh, to make intercession uh, for each one of us, friend. Uh, uh, why don't you give your life to him? Uh, why don't you give your heart to him uh, and let God do a work in you this morning? Deception, destruction, defeat, those words we don't like. You know, we've had a lot of tornadoes this year. A lot of tornadoes, some recently just the last few uh, days in Oklahoma. You see those pictures, thanks to the Facebook News Network. <laughs> it's easy to see video and pictures. And uh, it is very convenient, whether you want to admit it or not, it is. You can see, you can, you can see folks that are in the tornado videoing it with their cell phone. And that's fine at a distance. But when that thing gets close... Go and get you. Don't try to be a hero and get the best video. <laughs> Save yourself. But you know what? They showed a video the other day. This guy was in his shop, Sister Shirley. Had a, had a, I think an old Mustang was in that shop, and he was outside. He said, there's a tornado coming. You could hear him talking. You could see the trees. I mean, it, it was like it is right now. Look outside. There's windows right here outside, just beautiful and green, just a beautiful. It was just so nice and pretty, but you could see a little bit of a breeze going. He said there's a storm, and I mean, he, he, he never let off of that video. And I think six or seven minutes later, after all was said and done, he had went inside of his garage, and they hunkered down. They come back out. And the place that he had just videoed was literally unrecognizable. There, there, there was bare trees that used to be full of leaves. The barn next to the where he was at, little building, gone. Windows and doors where the building he was in just busted out, just destroyed, devastated. And the thought come to my mind as I saw that, I said, that is what the enemy desires to do to end individuals and the church this is the thing we see it we know it's not, it's not like we don't we, we, we don't know that he's there we know he's at work we know he's trying to destroy we know he's trying to tear apart oh god oh we're so caught up in our own self that we're saying oh wow look and we've got our phones out in a, in a, in a, in a figurative sense and we're saying, look, 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 it's coming, it's coming. Oh, oh no, oh, look at what happened. Look at what if I'm if, if we're not careful, we'll be just like those. But you know what I think? I think the best thing we could do is since we see the storm coming, since we see the deception, since we see all of these things coming against us, why don't we do just like the Lord said he prayed for Peter? He said, I'm praying that your faith does not fail you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help us once again to find our time of prayer to find our time of fasting and say God would you help me Lord if I can be a go between if I can be a foundation if I can be a sure place let me help somebody let me be a foundation so that when the storms come that I can stand with someone and not be destroyed he's deceptive he's destructive But he's defeated. Not Jesus, but Jesus was nailed to a cross. 
And he showed us at Easter, I'm still king. I'm still king. Hallelujah. I'm still king. Oh, I'm still king. I know just the other day I got to thinking, I said, Lord, just in the church alone, there's three cases, and just in people that I know of alone, uh, more than that, here lately, of open heart surgeries and heart cases and blockages and things of that nature. I said, oh, there's been several people that we know and love have had to go under the knife. They've had to have surgery. I thought, Lord, does the church need open heart surgery? Oh God, oh God, have we lost the flow of blood that we once had? I'm talking about the fountain of blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins. Have we lost the healing power? Have we lost the delivering power? God, would you help us this morning? There's a sifter on the loose. Oh, but there's a Savior that is greater, friend. He's my forgiver. He forgiveth all my iniquities. He's my healer. He heals all my diseases. He's my redeemer. Up. He's my crowner up. and he's my satisfier. I wonder if you know him this morning. His name's Jesus. Have you ever met him? Amen. Do you know him this morning? Hallelujah. Come, Sister Ashley, get us a song. I wonder if you know my Savior this morning. I, I, I thought I, I fell in prayer last night. And I thought I'd go a different way today, but I fell in prayer last night. Amen. That the Lord was going to let somebody know this morning that Satan is desiring to sift somebody as wheat. His desire is to destroy you. I think I mentioned this Wednesday night, but we know the enemy. He steals, he kills, and he destroys. We know that. He'll steal your joy. He'll steal your peace. And his desire after that is to kill you. I'm not talking about just spiritually. I'm talking about physically. Because if he can take your natural breath, the chances are over. But what about that last part? Destroy. Well, he's already killed me. He's already stole things from me. He's already killed me. Where does that destroy come then? All the good that you had ever done in life, even after you're dead and folks have, have, have said kind words over you and they've lowered you into the ground, if he can still destroy any kind of a reputation that you ever had, he'll do that. You say that's cruel. That's exactly what he is. Cruel. He desires to sift. But Jesus said, I pray for you. Hallelujah. I pray for you that thy faith fail thee not. And I like what he said after that. He even put it right back because sometimes we miss this. He said, I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. And then he said, if when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Well, you mean after God has done a great work in my heart, I can't just find my place on the seat of do nothing. No, you cannot. He said, strengthen thy brethren. Strengthen thy brethren. You know what he's doing? He's going totally in opposition to what the devil desires to do. He wants to destroy you, but Jesus said, I want you to live, I want you to have life, and I want you to encourage somebody else. Hallelujah. Oh, there's, a, there's enough deception. There's enough destroying. There's enough bad news. You can go to any website you want to go to. CNN, CBS, Fox, whatever it is. Even some of the conservative news max, some of those. I just, I, I, I just, <laughs> I, I don't think you can find one not on the front page. Everything on the front page is bad news, bad news, bad news. It's the economy. It's the it's the alphabet people. It's, it's just all this stuff, bad news, everywhere you look. And then you get down on page five, way down at the bottom, and a little bit of caption, it'll say something, you know, Good Samaritan helps such and such out, if you can even find it. It's bad news everywhere. But see, the bad news, amen, is that the devil wants to sift you. The good news is he wants to save you and make you an encourager among the brethren. 
What happens when we get delivered? Stand with me all over the house. What happens when God does a great work? Amen. And he gives us that encouragement. We get up from the altar. And what do we do? We start hugging necks. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, God's been good. We start testifying. We start all. You know what that does? That just encourages somebody else to think, well, if God can deliver them, if he can bring them out, and he can encourage them, look what's happening. Well, I believe he might can do it for me. So I think I'll just give myself to him. And let God help me for a change. Hey, some of you been being sifted. You, 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 you feel like you're being sifted more than you've ever been. I'm going to tell you. you. You think he's not. He is after every one of you this morning. I don't care who you are. Rich, poor. Might have. Black, white. Might have. Social status. Matters not. The enemy's desire is to populate hell because he knows he's going to be there for all eternity. And misery loves company. But I'm going to tell you what. There was a man that died on the cross. He said, it's not my will that any perish, but that all come to repentance. Father, I love you today. Lord, I thank you this morning for your presence that has been in this house. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are my deliverer. Oh, God, even when it feels like that I'm under the gun, it feels like that the trials will not stop coming. It feels like it's coming in wave on top of wave on top of wave. And before I know it, it's flooded and it's hurricane and it's just windy. Oh, and it's destroyed. Oh, God. And in the middle of that, I cry out to you, God, save me. Save me. Deliver me. Lord, and you've never failed me. Thank you, Jesus, that you are my deliverer. Lord, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would touch someone's life in this service right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray today. Hallelujah. How about it this morning? You feel like you're about to be sifted? You feel like it's just coming in? It's coming in. It's just trial after trial. It's just wave after wave. Why don't you step out this morning? Why don't you come and let God help you this morning? Amen. I want to encourage you this morning if you're coming and God's been good to you. Why don't you find somebody that's coming and get with them and pray with them? Why don't you lay your hand on somebody and pray with them and let God touch them and touch you also? Why don't we come pray somebody through the victory this morning? God wants to help. God's wanting to deliver. God's wanting to save. He's wanting to do a great work. And if we'll trust God with it, if we'll give it to God, He will be our deliverer. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let God move. I said, let God move. Yes, let Him move. be encouraged. God, I pray that their faith would be strengthened. Lord, I pray, God, that they would be encouraged in you. Oh, yes, the destroyer is after them. But, oh, God, would you increase their faith? God, would you increase their faith? God, would you move in something? When the storm around you rages and you're tossed to and fro, when you're faced with life's decisions and you're not sure which way to go, stand still and let God move. Standing still is hard to do. When you feel you have reached the end, He'll make a way for you.
tide is swiftly rising and you wonder where he's been friend there never was a moment and that his arms weren't reaching out you can rest assured and be secure god is
make